So I'm in the workspace right now. I have created my project and now I can go ahead and import a few things to do a voiceover for. So I'm just going to go to my media, come down to sample video and get a few videos that I can do a voiceover for. So why would you do a voiceover? A voiceover is great for explaining things, for giving more information about what's happening in the video, and uh, for just adding your own personal touch on the clips that you create. So right now I have this video of islands right here. And let's say this is a video of a recent trip that I went to. If I have a lot to say about what happened in this video, putting a text over it or adding subtitles is not a nice way to do it because most times people won't even uh, read those subtitles if you're just putting like a paragraph of what happened in this video. So a great way to explain things in videos is by doing a voiceover. So I can do a voiceover of why I went to this location, what happened there, and so many other things. Another instance is when you explain what's uh, what you're doing in a video. So right now we have this other video called Plating Food. I'm going to put it right here. Let's skip here. Let's take a look. So someone is pouring sauce over this dish. If I wanted to make this dish and that sauce, or if I just want to know what this person is doing, a voiceover would be great. So the chef right here could tell me that this is a mushroom dish. I'm adding this sauce. Maybe the chef is using a technique that I want to learn. And if the chef did a voiceover over this video, it would just look really good. Maybe put some sophisticated music in the background. And that way, as the audience, we can grow closer to what's happening in this video. I'm sure you've all seen documentaries where there is food scenes, everything is in slow motion, and the chef is just explaining uh, what's happening in the video, there's some music in the back and you just feel really close to the chef because they're talking about their experience, they're talking about what goes on into creating this dish and that's a lot better than just seeing this video where there's no text, no audio, no voiceover and we just have no idea what we're looking at. If you can't identify the ingredients, you're just looking at something on a plate the audience is always looking for context as to what's happening in the video. So by adding a human touch, you can call it, which is uh, where you show your face in a video, you speak over a video, you can actually allow the audience to grow closer to what you're doing in here. If you have this video with no text, no audio, no voiceover, and if you have another video of the same uh, footage, but with a chef explaining uh, the dish, maybe there's some sophisticated music in the background. That way, with those two elements that are coming from a human, I, as the audience, will feel closer to the second video that has those human elements. So a voiceover can really transform your video and in this lesson we're going to see how to create a voiceover for your video. So let's go to the beginning. The voiceover starts from where you put your time indicator. So if I put it here, the voiceover will start from here. If I bring it here, like uh, it will start here. I'm going to start mine somewhere in the middle, let's say. And I'm going to come to this icon. It's right above the timeline here. Just uh, It's a microphone icon. Just click on it once and we get the record audio tab. It's pretty simple to use. Just choose a device that you want, which is your microphone. Right now I have an external microphone plugged in. If you don't have an external microphone, you will only get your device's built-in microphone, which, which is also okay to use. If you have multiple things that would show up here, I'm going to stick with the external microphone. We also have an option to mute project. We're going to see what this is in a second. I'm just going to leave it on and now let's go ahead and hit this big red button. We will get a countdown. And my voiceover has started and you can see I'm six seconds in and this guy is just expanding. I'm seeing the video, but it ended here. I can just go ahead and hit this and now I have a voiceover which is also saved in my project media. You can go ahead and rename this. This is a bit too long. Right click, come down to rename. 
let's call it audio one, hit enter. And now this is more organized. You can see there's a check mark next to it because we have it in our timeline. If I delete this, select it and then go here, we no longer have that check mark because it's not in my project anymore. So I'm just going to bring this back. Now I can decide where I want to put it. I can also trim or split this audio track just like we did with the videos. Maybe drag one of the corners here and trim it like so. Or split it if necessary. I'm going to split it right here. Get the scissor guy. Click it once and now I have split the clip into two things. I'm going to create a space here and now I can go ahead and listen to my voiceover. My voiceover has started and so as you can see we have this voiceover uh, over our video. Now let's see what happens when we have a music playing in the background. I'm going to delete these but deleting it from here does not delete the file completely so you still have it in your project media. I'm going to move to my audio tab here and just drag a music that I want to put in the background. We got this music right here. And I'm just going to drag this line, you can see this thin line, just drag it down a bit so we lower the audio so we can hear ourselves speak as well. I'm going to bring it down to negative uh, 10 decibels. There we go. Let go once you're finished. So now this, uh, the audio has been lowered. And now again, I'm going to choose where I want my voiceover to start. I'm going to move to the beginning of my uh, project this time. I'm going to hit this microphone icon again. We're getting the same tab. This time we're going to uncheck this. So our project right now has audio because of this music. And what happens when you don't mute your project is that the music is going to play at the same time as you are recording a voiceover and that can be distracting because there's a lot of things happening at once. Let's see how that works. I'm going to uncheck this and let's uh, start recording. Start recording. So the music is playing and I am speaking at the same time. There we go. Once you're done, hit OK. And now I have a music and my recording. Let's rename these guys. Audio 2. Let's play this back. Over here. So the music is playing and I am speaking at the same time. If I were to do an important voiceover where I'm giving really complicated information or if I have a lot to say, the music playing at the same time is going to distract me and I may end up saying the wrong things. So that is why you would need to mute your project when you're recording a voiceover. So I'm going to leave this checked on and now let's see what happens when I have this checked on. There we go. The music is not playing and I'm just getting a new voiceover. You can see we have a third audio track. I'm going to stop this. And now I have a third voiceover right here. You can see it started from where I kept my time indicator. And now I have a third voiceover. Let's rename this audio three. All right. So I have three voiceovers and every time you create a, or just hit this button, doesn't matter if you don't have an audio track, Filmora is going to make an audio track for you. So I have reached the limits of my, of my three audio tracks. Instead of going over here and making a new audio track, I can actually just go ahead and hit this and Filmora will make an audio track for me. So let's hit this. Again, mute project. Get the countdown. There we go. So Filmora is already automatically going underneath the previously made audio track. And if I stop this, I now have audio track four, even though I didn't create it using this guy. 
And that's how easy it is to make, uh, to create a voiceover with Filmora. There is another way that you can create a voiceover, another way to access that option that is. So I'm just going to delete all of these from my timeline. They're still here. And I will go somewhere in my timeline, go over here in the My Media tab, go to My Media, Import, drop down menu and go for Record Voiceover. Just like how we did it with webcam and screen recordings. Just hit this and we can access the voiceover uh, tab. So you can either go from here or from here, whichever you prefer. Other times you have an audio track. Let's drag audio one in here. And let's say I messed up somewhere around here and I want to do a new audio uh, recording, but I want to keep the first segment here. One way to do that is to just split this, uh, cut. So split this audio track and let's say this area and then get rid of the one in the middle, drag my new audio track, do the same thing here. So I'm going to split that area just like we did for the first one, get rid of the excess, delete, hit backspace or do that and then place it here, readjust, and do that. So this was time consuming. Uh, I had to do the splitting a bunch of times and readjust the audio tracks. Let's hit Command Z or Control Z to undo. But there's an option to overwrite your audio tracks and that saves you time. So I'm just gonna go to the area where I want my new audio track, which is audio two, to be placed. Before we do that, let's go ahead and delete these extra audio tracks. Just select them, hit the, uh, the trash icon. And then I'm going to select audio one, decide where I want the new audio to go. Then it's also selected here. So I have this selected here and this one here. And then we're going to right click on the new audio, come down to overwrite. There we go. So it's placed in the middle and I can maybe get rid of the, uh, drag this end and just get rid of it. So now I have this new audio placed right where I wanted it to. And this is way better than trimming and splitting and then readjusting the audio. Let me just zoom in here. We have this little bit left that I want to get rid of. There we go. So I just hit delete. So I have audio one and audio two placed next to each other without having to uh, split it and then trim it and do all of that. You can also insert audio. Let's go over here by selecting that audio in your project media, right clicking and then hitting insert. There we go. So the difference between overwrite and insert is that uh, overwrite can uh, put that new audio track on top of the one that you want. So my playhead is going to be on this audio three. And if I overwrite audio four, audio four will replace anything that's underneath that audio. So if I select this here, select this here, right click hit overwrite, you can see audio four replaced uh, the that chunk of audio three and I can't get it back unless I move this here and then drag one of the sides which will be time consuming. So um, the difference between overwrite and let's hit control Z. The difference between overwrite and insert is that overwrite will write something over another thing but an insert just moves that chunk to uh, the other side. So I'm just going to select audio three again, audio four, right click, insert. You can see I still have the chunk of audio three. It's just moved to the right. So audio four didn't replace and get rid of anything. It just replaced that audio and just moved it a little bit here. So that's the difference between overwrite and insert. Depending on whether you want to keep that underlying segment, you would choose either overwrite or insert. And delete these or just hit control Z. There we go. Delete that chunk. There we go. We have another option. If you right click, it's called uh, append, which 
is different from insert and override, by the way. Append just places the audio uh, in order. So even if I have my playhead here, if I hit append, it's going to show up here. So it's not going to go over anything, but we'll just move to the next empty space, which is right here. So you can use append, even if I go in the beginning, let's try this again, it's still going to show up here. So you can use append if you want to keep everything in the order that you created. You can also check your audio before bringing them in here. Whichever audio I click, I get it in the preview panel. I can listen to it. There we go. So for more, and maybe just jump through and see whether I want to use this audio and then bring it in here. You can also right click and hit play. There we go. Which so if we'll do the same thing, let's try it with another audio. My voiceover has started and there we go. So you can play it before bringing it in here. Maybe you don't want to use audio four. It's not suitable. You just want to use audio three. And then you can also right click to add to a new track. Right now we don't have a third track, but if I hit this, Filmora will make a new track for me and it will put it right here because my playhead was over here. It started from this location. Let me bring it here maybe. And then right click on audio four, add to new track. It's going to start from here and then end at where it ends. Now that we learned how to record our screen, record our webcam and our audio using voiceovers, it's now time to move on with how we can edit videos.